Again, it's like, you know, just because you get a big burger on your plate. Here's the thing. I'm not, I'm never, there's a constant in life. I'm never unhinging my jaw to eat a hamburger, okay? So if you serve me a burger that's 15 inches tall, I'm taking a little bite of like the bottom bun and then I'm moving up as much as I can. And then it's like patties one to three clearly missed. And then I'm getting a slice of Havarti and a slice of Swiss. Then I'm getting one bite that's basically just salad because it's all the toppings. It's the best that I can do it, okay? So like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna give me a burger that's that tall, you can't tell me to, to unhinge my jaw. We'll, we'll take it piece by piece. We're gonna modularize it. I'm so happy that the world is, is coming around to this, you know, thick burgers are too much take. Because it was not a popular take for a while. I was, I've been saying it since 2013, maybe even earlier. And people were like, you know, minus two, just eat the burger. Why are you complaining? You know, you complain about everything. And there's some truth to that, I suppose. But I don't complain about a small burger. Very rarely have I gotten a burger and been like, this is too small. I honestly, for, for a while there, I just stopped ordering burgers. Because I, you never knew whether you were going to get something that was like a reasonable size. Not even like from a calorie standpoint, just from like a, I don't want to pull a tendon in my mandible. So sliders? No, I'm just like a, just like a normal burger. Because we've gone from like, like normal burger used to be like, I always think of like the McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. It's not as small as a McDonald's cheeseburger. It's not as big as a Big Mac. But they went crazy, man. Like, especially once pubs started to open up on like every corner, once other businesses all faded after the global financial crisis, they, every, every single brew pub just started offering, it, like the classic burger was like a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. But then they're like, with the 17 paper towel burger, it's got 15 patties. It comes served with a toothpick shoved through a Bloody Mary. And then that Bloody Mary has a corn dog on top of it. Like it just, it got to the point where it, it was just ridiculous. So I'm, I'm happy that I think we've moved back to maybe at least more people are open to the idea of a, a, a more reasonably sized hamburger. I wouldn't even mind, like, if, if you're, we've experimented with tall burgers, some of them work, some of them don't. I would love to have, like, what about just a wide burger? Nobody's ever experimented, really, with raising the circumference of the burger. They just put more and more toppings on it. If the patty is great, give me, give me a, a like, a, a plate-sized hamburger that's only, like, you know, half an inch tall or something like that. I'd be into that. I'd at least give it a try. I'd eat my burger the long way. We don't go out to eat that much anymore, partly because we have to justify our Costco membership and partly because every restaurant we go to needs to have um, parking, ample seating, high chairs available, and then like something that a two-year-old can eat without complaining too much. But even before we had uh, our daughter, I was like a once every five years order a hamburger type of guy. It would have to be like, I would really have to have a craving. I would order a sandwich from time to time for sure. But the burger had to, it had to be right. No, I've had a lot of burgers in my life, but like, well, here's the thing. When I first started going to restaurants, like by myself or with my friends as a teenager and a young adult, I got the burger like every time because I thought that's what adults did. Then when I stopped being such a picky eater, I started ordering things that were actually in like the entree section instead of sandwiches and burgers started experimenting a little bit more and then I just I didn't really see a good reason to go back to the burgers at most places some places they got a they got a heck of a burger but um, but now as an adult I mean I eat hamburgers on an annual basis for sure M mostly I would cook them at home even then it might be like two or three times in the summer at a restaurant I'm like uh, it's a very low chance I order the burger Relatively high chance I, I get a sandwich of a sandwich is on the menu. I understand it's like a, a bit of a semantic difference, but I don't know. People don't seem to be making that many tall sandwiches. And if they do, they're very obviously lampshaded. It's called like the, you know, Burge Dubai Club sandwich or something like that. But sometimes you're just like, I'll take the cheeseburger, please. And it comes with like 15 onion rings under the top bun. And you're like, come on, man. What am I supposed to do with this? I, it's ridiculous. Haven't been to Subway in a while, for sure. I mean, like... <laughs> you're gonna make me say it. I think Subway is, like, pretty bad, but I like it more than the average person. 
The main thing that, that brought me to Subway was convenience. But um, there's been a, f a few too many times, maybe, that I've, that I've gone to Subway and I've had to wait in line for like six minutes to start making my sandwich. And that, at that point, I'm like, brother, I could just be in and out of the grocery store with, with bread and meat by then. I could be making my own sandwich for a fraction of the price. No, I, even like pre-ordering on the app doesn't work at some of the subways in Vancouver because they like, we can't have nice things. So you, uh, some of them I've seen them with the racks for online orders, but uh, the, a lot of the subways here got rid of the racks. And now you have to go up to the front and be like, um, hey, I placed an online order, but apparently like every subway, subway franchisee of all time is insanely cheap. So the entire store is like manned by one 17 year old who's making 15 sandwiches at the exact same time. No disrespect to the, to the subway employee, by the way, I'm disrespecting the, the, the franchisee here. Like at least at the at the bubble tea shops, they usually got like one high school senior taking orders and then like one high school senior in the back working like seven blenders at the same time, keeping society functioning. But a subway, I mean like you you need at least like two people to make a subway work. Cause one person follows a sandwich from start to finish. It's not Henry Ford's uh, production line, you know, where they're passing them off. Because then you got to reintroduce yourself to the... And then you reintroduce yourself to the... Ca you ever go to a subway and the cashier is like, what did you order? Is it... Do you want... I know I'm making my own sandwich. I mean, do you want me to punch the shit into the till too? It's crazy. You got to... Two to three workers at a subway. That's... that's a, and I don't even know. There might be more in the back. Somebody's got to be cutting up the produce, I guess. But the subway is kind of in like a death spiral, right? Like nobody goes there anymore. Nobody goes there anymore, so they probably have, like, you know, no less desire to hire more staff because there's less demand. But then, you know, eventually everybody reaches a breaking point where you're like, oh, it's been 21 minutes to get my cold cut combo. I could have just, you know, eaten at a real restaurant by this point. If even I'm giving up on Subway, then, then I think it's, I think they're cooked, man. You ever taste Quiznos? Yeah, I mean, Quiznos was like, it was better than Subway. Quiznos... Subway walked so Quiznos could run. The metaphor doesn't really make sense because Subway stole, like, the toaster oven idea from Quiznos. You know what the, the main marketing problem with Quiznos was for me? Is that at Subway, there's only two sizes. So you could trick yourself into thinking a 6 inch is small and then a 12 inch is regular. You're like, well, I'm not, I'm not a small, I'm an adult, so give me the regular. I'll take a foot-long baguette stuffed with ingredients. But then Quiznos had like a six inch sub and a nine inch sub. And you're like, what the hell? I'm getting the large, but the large is three inches shorter than the Subway sub. Sure, it tastes better, but I'm not at the sandwich place or something that tastes good. I'm at it for like the maximum amount of like uh, carbohydrates and cured pork products to shove into my gullet in, in a socially acceptable setting. I don't know, sandwiches are not really popping off here. Bowls definitely popping off. Burrower giant rats. Can I still can I suck the blood of a rat, or is that is that too dangerous? I don't mean in real life. I know it's probably frowned upon at least. I mean, what's the minimum amount of money? I mean, this is like a, a prickly question. But like as a kid, when I let's just say like when I was in eighth grade, okay, a dollar was an amount of money where you could reasonably expect to buy either like a, a, a bottle of soda or a bag of potato chips. I feel like that has changed over time, partly because I don't buy soda or chips as much. It's definitely not, it's not a dollar, at least not in Canada anymore. Like if I was buying a bag of chips at a convenience store, I think I would, ex I would expect it, with, without a, a hint of irony, I would expect it to be $1.69 for, for a bag of chips. Two to three bucks now? Maybe, maybe we got, maybe we got some deals over here for all I know. A Coke is two fifty nine. The three thirty boys or the five hundred boys, the island boys. Oh, two fifty nine for the three thirty boys. That's that's up there. You know why? I feel like maybe soda inflation is higher than chip inflation though. So I feel like the chips are are still under two bucks for a, a single serving bag, and I mean like a real single serving bag, not a family size bag where you you're the whole family. You're not wrong though, someone in chat typed, if you had five bucks back in the day, you rode your bike to the gas station, you were feasting. Oh man. I mean, if you had any amount of money 
from a bill, like, I mean, you you could buy chips, candy, and uh, and a drink, and have a little bit of change left over. Nowadays, if you got a five dollar bill in your pocket, you go to a Seven Eleven, you pick up two things. They're like, they they tell you the total, and you're like, hang on, let me get my card out of my wallet. Also, they're like, please sign up for the rewards program, and you're like, no, I'm not interested. And then they're like, no, 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 you'll save money if you do it. And I'm like, no, I'm really not interested. And then they're like, okay, fine. And then when they turn around the card reader, it says like, please enter your email address to join the rewards program. And you hit not interested. And then the clerk is like, no, for real, like you'll save money. Shit drives me crazy. Then it's like, enter a tip. <laughs> tip culture has gone a little too far. Another reason that I, that I stopped going to Subway is that they finally succumbed to it, which is like, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's free money for most patrons, but like now with like, they want you in and out of the store as fast as possible. They have the audacity to ask for a tip at the end. Here's, here's a tip. I'm going to start making my ham sandwiches at home and saving $11. I don't mind tipping a, like a, a local business, but like tipping a, tipping a subway, it just seems like I'm contributing to the erosion of the character of my neighborhood. It's not that they don't deserve it. I mean, they, they deserve it as much as the person who like, you know, puts out your your Starbucks order or something, but... No, actually, someone said NL crosses the border to go to Subway. One of the last times I went to Subway was in the US, and it was almost like the last straw. I was like, why is this place so fucking busy? Like, at the very least in, uh, in Canada, people have the good sense to not really go to Subway, which is why I find it so audacious whenever there's a lineup. But I went to like a, a suburban Subway in Blaine, Washington, and it had a lineup of like nine people. And I, it, it took half an hour to get our sandwiches. I was like, what the hell are people doing here? Blaine, what's going on? Everybody had their phone out. They were ordering like six sandwiches each. Nobody likes anything except the, the steak and cheese with four lines of mayonnaise. Like it's, it was out of control. Last time I went inside the Papa John's, literally everyone beside me in the store was a door dasher. It's crazy. I'm, people do be door dashing. I'm definitely, I'm entering like my suburban dad arc. Like I, I can see myself transforming into the kind of guy who's like, you know, my daughter's boyfriend leaves the refrigerator open for like more than two seconds. And I'm like, what are you trying to do kid? Cool down the whole neighborhood. Like I'm at this stage now where like, I'll order a pizza and tip the pizza delivery driver. But like my ass is, if, if I'm gonna door dash something, I'm, I'm using Uber Eats. And then I am choosing the pickup option, which incurs no extra fees, and I'm driving to the damn restaurant. I'm, I'm regressing to like the 1990s, and honestly, I, I like it, I like it. We're on the DoorDash arc again? No, the opposite, we're, fuck DoorDash. Why not just call the restaurant? I still don't like to like make a phone call if possible. At least, like I, I genuinely think it's not just phone anxiety, but like there's, cause I made some good phone calls this week. Hi, uh, yeah, this is Ryan calling again. I'm just wondering about the application status. Uh, we applied for uh, daycare when our daughter was one day old. She's about six months out from turning three now, and she's aging out of her current daycare. I know you guys are busy. It would just be nice to get a status update. We're free anytime this week. I'll cancel all of my appointments to be graced with one second of your attention. Thanks so much. Here's my phone number. Um, I don't mind making a phone call. I just feel like... The app is a superior way to order food because it eliminates one possible mix-up, which is someone either not hearing me properly over garbled, like, 1920s phone infrastructure, um, or alternatively, they're, like, half distracted while I'm ordering because they're in a busy restaurant that's got a lot of shit going on, and then they're, like, you know, pretending to write it down, but they're not actually writing it down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I feel like it would be awesome if like every website had, or if every restaurant had like their own website. That's not really realistic. So when, if, if I'm ordering pickup on Uber Eats, at least like the menu has been digitized and I'll, I'll eat the small, hopefully small upcharge or hopefully no upcharge, but probably small upcharge. Also, yeah, I mean, I, I think an online order is better for the restaurant in, in at least one way. In the sense that um, the employee doesn't have to actually take my order, which means that they have more time to take care of the stuff that they should do in the restaurant. You know, like checking on the patrons and taking in-person orders and 
you know, etc., etc. I don't know if you can win this game, but I think we're going to win this game. I don't see, I don't see what could lose it for us. You can? I don't know if I can win this game, but I, <laughs> I think it's coming. I'm still, I should, I should keep sucking. Because these guys, when I get close to them, they get confused. So I can just, I can suck. Ah, I was going to say indiscriminately, but that's not true. We need to, well, I don't want to say we want to suck discriminately. 